is your reaction to being named the new leader of the NDP? Well, it's uh, it's exciting. Um, I don't, I'm not sure it's fully sunk in yet. I, you know, I'm not someone who ever takes anything for granted. So I was, uh, you know, doing the math pretty carefully when those results came up. But uh, mostly, I'm excited and very eager to do the work that's in front of us, and thankful, so thankful for for the team that we've got around us. Um, you know, as I said, our our volunteer team, our caucus team in the party, that team of MLAs. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, we're going to have a celebration tonight, and tomorrow we get back to work. Yeah, and I guess you just touched on it there. What is next for Carla Beck and the NDP? Is there going to be any any rest for the wicked here? Well, we have we have a caucus meeting tomorrow, and a lot of outreach ahead of us. That was a real focus during this whole campaign. Was that outreach building? Um, talking to people right across the province and that's not going to stop it's, it's going to intensify now and I guess what is your reaction to being kind of the the first now uh, woman leader of a political party breaking ground um, you know I, I've, I've said this a few times when I really feel that is when I look at my grandma uh, who is here today not something I I'm sure she would have thought she would see in her lifetime when I look at my daughters some of the messages that we've had um, come in from young women and uh, women who've been around politics for a long time. It is, um, it's special, it's an honor, um, and I, I can't wait to do the work with that whole team of fantastic MLAs, uh, female leaders that we have. You said you wanted to like, take back Saskatchewan, can you just elaborate on that? One thing that's been really, really clear during this campaign and things that we were hearing really since um, since 2020, but especially since January, is a sense that our province is moving in the wrong direction. That polarization, um, the pitting neighbor against neighbor, as I spoke about in the, in the speech. Um, I think that's the wrong direction for us. Uh, the, the Premier's unwillingness to look at some of the issues that are so plainly in front of us, you know, saying he doesn't care about emissions, doing nothing about the mental health, um, addiction, suicide crisis in this province, how our schools are being funded, how there are health care centers that are closed due to lack of staffing all across this province. Um, it's time that we had a government that took the calls, met with people, and built those solutions, and that's exactly what we're, we're proposing to do. How are you going to grow the party, and do you see yourself having maybe more moderate policies going forward? We've been very clear all through this campaign that we are starting at the point, uh, not of polarization, which was something that I think we see, especially with the SAS party right now, and working from those shared values that we, we do share. Um, it doesn't matter which community you've been in, north, south, urban, rural, uh, those, those values, which I think are Saskatchewan values, looking after your neighbor, um, you know, being humble, uh, building for the future, um, delivering social programs that benefit people in the province. Those values I see everywhere. I, what I'm proposing is that we start from that connection and not from polarized positions. And that's something that ha people have been very, very receptive to. Um, and that includes people on, on the left and to the center left in, in this province. And that's what we propose to, where we propose to keep building. And is rebranding off the table? Would you ever consider changing the name or, or rebranding the party at all? Well, rebranding, and, and I think I've mentioned this before, is something that does come up. Um, what I've said before, and I, I feel this even more strongly now, is that any, any rebranding can't just be about changing colors and changing font. It has to be about fundamentally changing how we go about things, um, telling our own story. I've said a number of times what too many people know about us in this province is what the SAS party has told them. We need to get out there and tell our own story, um, but also making those connections, building trust, People don't listen to what you have to say if they don't trust you. Get in front of them, build that trust, um, and actually demonstrate that we're doing things differently. The SAS party has said you know, the NDP is an anti-pipeline, anti-energy industry. Do you support pipelines in the oil and gas sector? That has been the position of the Saskatchewan NDP, as far as I've been a member, has been to support those federally. Um, all, of the, all of the pipelines that have been federally approved, we've made, been very clear in this campaign that we are taking an all of the above approach to jobs. Um, we need a realistic solution to, re to reduce emissions in this province. Um, and, and maybe here more than ever, that polarization is keeping us 
in the party and outside the party from actually finding solutions. We have a premier who says he doesn't care about emissions, we do. We want to build those common sense, those, uh, those solutions with the people who work in the industry, uh, the people who have ideas and uh, expertise in, in renewables. I do agree with the Premier here. Saskatchewan has what the world needs. We need to take advantage of that and build solutions that actually benefit the people of Saskatchewan. That's not what we're seeing from this government right now.